What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back. And this time around, we're taking a look at Obelisk. And while Magma Miner is the uh, the strength build of the game, this is a different strength build of the game, the more defensive strength build of the game. Obelisk is really, really strong. It has a, a ton of AoE potential. Definitely one of the beefiest classes. Like, its defensive capabilities are absurd. I think this is one of the best aspects to run a spiked build with. And you can do some really, really deadly stuff with it. So let's go 750 quillings. Just always go for quillings or damage. Uh, what do we got? Spiked damage. Oh, man. You know what? Let's do it. Let's go. Let's show you all a spiked build. Paired iron clap. Um, yeah, I guess we'll take it. Not usually a fan of that, but it's not a bad choice. So one of the biggest things you got to be aware of with this character is obviously your first two abilities are, uh, they cost two each. So, you know, you shield bash, you seismic slam, your turn's done. This is a pure physical character. Like I said, it has great AoE, but it's single target damage definitely leaves a little bit to be desired. Uh, there's some things we can do to mitigate that, obviously, with different bindings and whatnot. But let's just, let's just show you rather than talk about it. So... Uh, let's see. Big damage all around. What we're gonna do is try to get three. Beautiful. Cost discount. And I can kill two. There we go. Alright, uh, now the main mechanic of this class is crush. The idea is all of our abilities deal crush damage. That's this little icon. When you reach three stacks of crush, uh, basically enemies take a large burst of damage. So that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to get enemies into crush so that it goes off. So we'll move here and we'll kill both of them. Let this one guy come in. You can see that big chunk of damage that, that guy suddenly took. That was the crush going off. Um do 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 let's go crit damage the common augment. An extra stack of crush isn't a bad thing necessarily, but there's some other stuff I think I'd want more. Let's go critical shield bash. Just ramp that up. And as for the tuner, um, let's go blink. Out of everything you can take, thing with blink is movement is always useful it's always useful like there's never a time where it's like oh blink's a bad choice like it's you know just because of how important positionals are in this game you can't go wrong with blink ever so let's we're gonna rush in at that at that Give us a crush stack on him. I was hoping to hit them both. That's not going to happen. So instead, we're going to hit him, and then we're going to just inflict another stack of crush here. We will blink over to here. Grab this in advance. Dash in. Focused on just getting this guy down. I might be able. No, I'm not. He's gonna escape. Damn. This is kind of what I was talking about when I said that this character tends to suffer from single target damage. You know, even with the crush going off there, there's just not enough for us to pull it off. Uh, I mean, if I had popped that, I might have been able to get get a uh, potentially could have done it, but it's okay. damage. Uh, da, 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 da. So this one's actually pretty hard. Precise is really nice with blink. Just the idea that you're going to blink and, you know, 100% crit damage. That, that can be pretty deadly. Um, increased range, though, is really hard to pass up on this character. I think it's one of the stronger things you can get your hands on. And we're still pretty early here, so let's go Sea Breach. See if we can't get a reward amplification moving forward.
Uh, minus five health or minus 50 quillings. Uh, I hate these. Um, okay, we're going to quillings now. What do we get? Ooh, bottled whirlwind. Free evasion every turn. Quite powerful. See, every turn there's one attack that's not going to hurt me. It's very nice. Okay, uh, so we don't want to open with Slam here. Keep in mind, he's submerged, so that is not something we want to do just yet. Instead, we're going to blink here. We're going to try. Can I hit them all? No, I can't. Well, we will do that. And then we're just going to come out. Oh, hang on. Before that, give him a stack of crush and then come out. see the difference in that range now. Pretty, pretty nice. Gonna grab that. Now I can just link here. There we go. close enough. Let's see. I wasn't. Go over here as opposed to... No, wait. wait, 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 wait. There we go. Alright, even though he's burrowed, we are going to pop one of these here, just because there's a, getting a lot of stuff on the screen. And then another thing that's important to note is a seismic slam is considered global, so you pop this, every enemy gets hit. Doesn't matter where they're at, they get hit. All this burrowing could probably kill you anyway. Thank you, Bottle Whirlwind. We're going to save this for the next turn. Pop that off. Pop that off. There we go. Are you magic? I think you have, uh, you are a magic movement. Okay, let's go harmonizing whistle then. Don't have any burn. We'll top our health off. Ooh, broad iron clap. Oh man, but quick and blink. Um, mm, let's go quick and blink. Broad iron clap is really good though. I mean, range in general. You're kind of seeing pretty much any time we play something, range can be very very strong um so here none of these really stand out as solo killers which is what i want jinx on the other hand is phenomenal for solo killing so we're gonna pick that up so like i said this character has plenty of aoe its biggest weakness is gonna be its ability to do nuke damage to a single target so, Preserving Jinx is pretty nice, just gives us three stacks anytime we use it. Um, I mean, obviously the idea of this is building it up, but we can kill something with it, and then we already got three more stacks. Days I'm not really worried about. Quickening Blink is okay, uh, but Preserving Jinx, pretty clear winner in that choice. And then Minus Will Cost, also very nice. I do like Distant Blink, but I'll take Will Cost over that. The Rhinifero. So, we're gonna kill these two right at the start. Just kill them, 
and that's going to now put us up to five stacks because two kills plus the three for use which is just helping us to build that up to kill this dude even faster now even though we don't really need to use seismic slam here this thing is we're just trying to get as much damage as we can into his ass blink outside of his aoe and turn There we go. Boom, hit everybody. We're up to seven. Well, it's not quite enough. But now it is. No, it's not. Don't want to... Come on. Damn it. Nudge over. He's right on top of it. Just barely short of the damage we needed to take him out. that and we'll just pop this and, and do the force the base shift basically I guess I could blink over and uh, now yeah I'll just wait it's like I'm blinking over and adding some stacks on go out here we don't want to make a movement on top of that stuff Link here. Back some range. Grab that. Got seven stacks right now. Almost enough to kill you. Screw it. Let's use it. By the time that's off cooldown, we'll finish him. Keep in mind, this looks good, like bash, but then I'm sitting right in lava. We don't want that. Instead, we're going to back out. We're just going to get some crush stacks on. Yeah, well, this is basically the kill. Oh, okay. Now, this is actually really hard to set up here. So Grim Vortex is really nice. You know, it's going to pull all the enemies in. Dread Harvest, on the other hand, is very, very risky. But it has insane potential. Because if we can get kills with Dread Harvest, then we're going to basically have this stacked up to where we have like a permanent 10 stacks of Dread. Now, this is very situational. Uh, this is one of the only times I would actually suggest taking this. Oh god, and lethal jinx, 100 damage. Yep, that's that's looking good. We're picking that up. I like the discount save, but no, nah, we just turned this into a, a monstrous single target ability. God, the fact that it's, it's a one cost, 100 damage, and three stacks. That is very, very strong. Four physical power, no brainer here, even though we have a, a big focus on jinx now. Um, let's go... Let's go... Prove your guys. So the big thing is, I don't like taking the Dread Harvest upgrade um, at, like if I'm getting that, I want it at the start of the second book that I'm gonna enter. Because if you get it like midway through the second book, you're not gonna really have enough time to get it up because you gotta keep in mind that this doesn't work like it does before. The big difference now is that I need to kill an enemy with it to get that stack. Meaning that to start, I need to get that, that uh, you know, basically 200 damage, a little bit under 200 damage, it's like 175 or whatever, but I need to kill somebody with just that damage alone to get a stack on this. So these little guys, they are a beautiful, beautiful godsend right now. Uh, how are we looking here? Yeah, do that. Then I can do this. And we'll go right back where we were. Let's kill you too. Boop. And that's just looking good now. Look at that. I don't think that I don't think it ever falls off that now. I think we just permanently have 
Big boy stacks on that. Beautiful. Crush. And we'll end there. I do need to pop this stuff. I don't like need it, but I might as well, simply for the fact that I'm running out of space. Uh, well, let's see. What are we going to kill first? Let's do that. And then we'll try and hit both. I'm not going to be able to hit both. If I can hit you, then I can crush you. I haven't found any of the spiky stuff yet. Let's soften and whip it. Four more physical power. Oh, and there's my broad iron clap. Beautiful. This is coming along really well. Like this is a very, very strong run. I mean, God, the fact the the fact that we have dread harvest already maxed out. We already have our our ten stacks. That's insane. Uh, sure. Oh God. Um. Okay. It's a shadow book on your first turn. One will and five magic power until end of turn. Okay, it just makes means I can uh, open a fight with a really fat dread harvest. Which that's like the perfect setup for this character. Just getting that that dread harvest early because, like I said, we don't we don't have a lot of single target right now, and so that completely that offsets that. That's no longer a uh, it's no longer a, a issue ever. I thought that hit you too, huh? Um, let me try and get close enough. To grab you. There we go. Now we'll do this. Just had to get rid of that that uh, little perk you had. Uh, let's go here and we'll kill you. What did I pick up that's poisoning everybody? I don't remember getting anything that's applying poison, but seeing poison all over the place. Get out of the way of that. Um, almost kill you outright. Let's see. Well, you are the only thing that's actually going to attack me. Can I completely clear you? Yes, I can. that here. That way I can kill them. Still blink out. Get that. I'm honestly confused about where my poison's coming from. I don't, I don't know what I picked up. Oh, you know what? It's the oozing jelly. There we go. Okay. I'm like, how am I poisoning everybody? What is happening here? Position that beautiful and no it's not gonna be enough well in that case we will kill you and then we'll just hang out here though I am a little disappointed I haven't gotten um, yes thank you Um, actually 20 damage on that isn't bad. We can get this. We don't have anything on slam. I was really hoping to do a, uh, a spiked build, but I'm not seeing the stuff I need to pull that off yet. Speak of the devil. Headbutt. Um, headbutt's insane. So shield slam, I mean, obviously 100 damage and, and 25 damage for each shield you have. It's a lot of potential there. Uh, assuming you have a lot of shield. We do not have a lot of shield. Headbutt, on the other hand, it's going to give us a bunch of spikes. So the idea here is we're going to get five stacks of spikes. Each enemy we pass through, we take one damage, thus triggering the spikes. 
So in this particular case, we're doing 142 damage from Headbutt. Those five stacks of spikes are going to give us, um, let's see, it'll be 110 damage. And then we have two more spikes from that. So Headbutt is going to hit very, very, very hard. We're gonna go binding empowerment. See if I can get if I can get something on here to give it more spikes. Oh, mm. yeah, making it a one coster. I'll take it. And then let's go max range for you. And I don't think we're particularly hard up for glyphs, so. Right, some beautiful openings. So we're gonna hit everything right off the bat. The back. We're gonna hit this dread harvest. Uh, I guess I'll hit you too. Spike. See the damage we just did. It procked up. It was like oh, 400 and some change. We're hitting three of you. Can we? Can we hit all three of you? Yes, we can. Just right there. Yeah, honestly, head headbutt turns that into just one of the most monstrous abilities in the game. The damage potential of it becomes like honestly just outrageous. Um Yes we'll kill can I get both of you? Please, please, please. Yes. There we go. And then let's teleport up here. And give y'all a stack of crush. Hit that, hit this, hit that. Hit both of them. And I think I can pull this off. Let's see. Ah, I'm not going to be able to. Well, whatever. We'll blow him up. And then we'll just end. Wow, we had another turn on deck too, wow. Remember that orb movement. Move orb. Or we're using we're using this to see our maximum move range, collecting the orb to reset it, and then we're moving on from there. Feeding an enemy smite the nearest or an extra 50 on crush. Um. Let's do Frida's mistake. If nothing else, the simple fact that it's just more, more oomph is always nice. Ooh. One stack is spiked every time I smack with that. But making this hit like a truck is really nice too. Let's see, what is our base crit chance at? Eight. Eh, so it would only put you at 18. Um, you know, screw it. It's purple. We'll take that. Honestly, at this point, I'm I'm cruising so fast. The fact that I got Dread Harvest built up as fast as I did, that alone put me at a an absolutely just insane level for progression. Uh yeah. Top off. Max our health. Kill the boss. Let's see. Uh, drafted bindings have minus two cooldown. No. Collecting an orb. This one's not bad. Because you're getting extra will per orb, which just means more jumping around. Um, let's go stone steel. It just makes us that much tankier. Toss out shadow book. Okay. So, one, we're gonna... Oh, should I kill you? How heavy are you? Oh, 
pretty good damage in Janus for the opener. Before we grab that. We're gonna go teleport here, grab that. We'll headbutt through you two. Hit him with the dread. And boom. Oh, man. So I almost always end up going Earthquake. If you have a Frost build, Avalanche can, can do insane amounts of damage. I mean, inflict Crush stats equal to the enemy's Frostbite stacks. So, you know, you do something like apply Frostbite and then hit that, and it's just like, crush, 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 crush. And you're doing tons of damage. I mean, even now, inflict two stacks of Frostbite, and then we're going to do Crush equal to that. So we're just instantly crushing the enemy. Uh, so it, it's good, but what's nice about this is the fact that every time I use it the damage goes up by 50 Which is pretty hard to beat And on top of that man The will cost reduction is really nice But free orbs are also pretty OP uh, Let's do free orbs It's hard to pass up free orbs Don't even need that. Okay, we're gonna here. There. Get you both. up there. I forgot I now have my free orb on teleport. I've had one more orb on the field. Which is important because those orbs are going to give us more cooldown reduction. Which is then allowing us to get off more earthquakes. Which is then building up magnitude more. A thousand damage already. It's like, ah, here, I'm gonna die. Um, let's go free smite on all enemies. I know you give me two more spiked, but perpetual smite is pretty good. And then I guess we'll take crit chance. Actually, I should have re-rolled that. Uh, yeah, why not? I'll do it. If it does crit, it's gonna just destroy entire worlds. Mm. Mm. So our cake, and it's pretty strong here, because it means this is free, this is free. Well, at the start, so really only saved me one. So my enemies inflicted with burn or frostbite. Um... Oh god. Oh god, I just noticed it's Orbic Orm Walker. Y'all don't understand. This quest over here, I have had that quest for like 20 runs now. <laughs> and, I, and I just can't seem to get Omic Orb Walkers to show up. And then of course, now, now that I have a build where I'm getting extra orb generation and I probably could have finished this in one go, it shows up when I don't have the Quillings for it. Big, big rip. This fight's going to end so fast, though, anyway. Alrighty, so... We're going to pop that. Grab one of these. Um, this will mostly kill you. Let's 
So I'm gonna have to be in someone's AoE. And I guess I could go over here. No? Hang on a second. I wanna avoid all the AoE. Yeah, I'll just take one, whatever. And I can hit you and put myself in a position to take more damage. Wonderful. Let's pop shield. So that's gonna hit. both of these goofs. Max range. Max range. Not going to be able to grab that one, but I can go here. Grab that. Grab that. Teleport over here. We're going to use this. Because that's going to deal damage. It's redirected him to now hit Shadow of Runestone. And then we're just going to pump some damage into this dude. He's getting messed up so badly. Mr. Mini. do an AoE, but I think I can mitigate most of that incoming damage anyway. to be, uh, he's gonna have a bad time, we'll just say that. Uh, you're my puncher, so let's go. Should be the angle I want, let's see. No, it's not, I need you to die. Actually, it doesn't matter, you've lost your, uh, your defensive capabilities. damage there on Earthquake. That was a crit. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you absolutely slaughter with Obelisk. So, like I said at the start, very, very strong AoE capabilities. The only thing this character is really going to struggle with is your ability to obliterate single targets. So stuff like the, the Pot of Golds, for example. Um, really easily mitigated. Something like, like getting uh, Jinx or Dread Harvest, if you can get that upgrade. Alternatively, cleave with that the three hit one. That one performs very well uh, because this is a more defensive oriented class. It can also perform well with things like burn. Uh, there's not as much in this kit for burn as there is for magma miner. There's a lot in this kit for spike. The spike build. I mean, you all, you all saw what headbutt was doing, and this wasn't even a proper spike build. That was just headbutt. Uh, but a proper spike build. And your headbutt is doing like thousands of damage per rush, which gets pretty absurd, as you can imagine. Uh, but either way, that is going to wrap up another guided gameplay. We have one more character on deck. Lost Cloak, which is actually the same character we did our initial uh, kind of intro to Inkbound with. So it'll be fun to show you all a full run with it. But either way, wrapping up here. Thanks for coming by, and I'll see you next time.